Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Welcome to Eyeshadow Palette Month. Today we're going to be ranking all of my neutral eyeshadow palettes. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be a ranking of all of the neutral eyeshadow palettes in my collection. This is part of eyeshadow palette month that I'm doing all throughout August. I'm posting daily videos and I will be ranking my entire eyeshadow palette collection, at least of the things I've reviewed. So I hope you're interested for more. Before we get into the video though, I would like to introduce myself for people who might be new here. My name is Maika. I've been a content creator for more than a decade. I, uh, I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and I really enjoy talking about eyeshadow palettes, so I hope that's something you're interested in as well, and I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. In total, I have 64 neutral toned eyeshadow palettes. Now, I definitely think, given that I've now made all of these divisions, that I could have perhaps put a couple of these into some of my other ranking videos, but hey-ho, we're dealing with it. I put everything into piles on the floor, and this is what I came up with with my neutral selection for my collection, so let's just get to it. In case you want to see reviews up with these and swatches and looks that I've done, I have all of those linked in the description box down below, so make sure you check those out, and I will have some shopping links for things that are still available, so that if you want to shop any of these, you can. Please be mindful that those can be affiliate links and that I could make a small commission if you shop through them. So we are going to go for from 64 all the way to number one. We're gonna race through it because I've got a lot to chat about. First things first, 64 is this guy, the Rude Cosmetics Roaring Twenties Excessive Palette. I had never tried this brand and I had spotted this very randomly online and was like, I could try that, that looks interesting. However, I just felt it wasn't that exciting. It definitely felt like cheap makeup to me. Um, now that I've tried it, I'm like, right, I've tried Rude. I don't have to try them ever again. And this is ranked in the lowest spot because I just felt color story wise, this wasn't all that interesting and it didn't have enough to offer for me. Another product that I'm ranking quite low is my reorganized Too Faced eyeshadow palette. I used to have a load of these uh, metal tin Too Faced palettes, but I decided to pull a lot of them apart and make them into my perfect neutral palette. So this palette doesn't exist, which is why it's in the bottom bottom ranking. I will pop the color story of the original gingerbread uh, spice up in here. Um, I still have only one Too Faced palette that I have in the original color story and everything else is either in here or it's been decluttered and these are the shades that I decided to keep. It is a perfect neutral uh, color story for myself, but since you would have to own the exact same palettes I used to own in order to be able to create this, I don't want to rank it any higher. And then I have these two things. Yes, they're called purple and lilac, but I feel these little palettes from Huda Beauty are essential neutral palettes with a pop of color, which is why they're in here. The purple haze looks like this, and I just feel like we, we essentially only get three purples. So the majority of this palette is like a warmer tone neutral, you could say, which is one of the things I've never loved, but I do combine, I do love combining these. So I like taking some of the purples then from this together with the purples from the other palette, but I just don't feel you need to do that in order to make a palette work. I prefer if my palette is like a one-stop shop. Here again, we have those peachy tones, which just really takes the vibrancy out of these palettes for me. And that's why I decided to rank them with my neutral palettes, you could say. I could have easily put, ranked these with my colorful things, but then I think they would also have ended up in the bottom part of the ranking, simply because these aren't the most colorful or the most fun palettes I have, but they are very functional. So we're ranking from 60 to 51 in this section, and the first thing I have for you in the number 60 spot is the Kiko Milano Stellar Love Under the Starry Sky palette. And I'm gonna have to be very careful with this because this has already broken, uh, because this arrived with the tray not being glued in properly. So this has been um, just a little bit fragile ever since. The brown already broke on me. Again, 50% of this is very neutral. The purples in here aren't too, too vibrant. So in my brain, the only thing that really stands out to me is that blue. Um, this has gotten really messy because of it having broken. And that's what I, why it's not a, my, one of my favorites. I do think the quality of it is really nice. And I think if mine had it broken, I would have loved this a lot more. However, I have tried some other Kiko palettes that I think I like better than this. They're not in this video, but they are in one of my other ones. And I have a lot of like pairings in this part of the ranking. I have two of the Temptalia, um, um, I have two of the Temptalia collab with Sydney Grace. These are uh, uh, quintessential, quintessential and on the horizon. 
Uh, this is the light version of the palette. These are no longer available. Um, but this one I decided to put here because even though it has colorful shades in, and I could have perhaps put this with my murky, colorful of a palette ranking as well, but I just felt that this pulled very neutral on me anyways, and therefore I wanted to rank it here. With these Temtalia palettes, I really enjoy the quality of them. They have a really good formula. But the color stories are a little bit weird, and one of the things that I probably would want to do if I do my next declutter is to rearrange these, take them out, and make them part of my singles collection, because I think it would make a lot more sense for me and I would get more use out of it. As palettes, they don't quite work. And here's the quintessential, quintessential? quintessence. Um, again, not super neutral, perhaps, because of these colorful shades here, but the things I reach for in here are neutral, so that's why I decided to rank it here but that's why they are at the lower end of the spectrum. So at the lower end of the spectrum, just because I don't really reach for these as much anymore, is these two Futurism palettes. These are the Cyber Bronze and the Astro Pink. Both of these have been slightly rearranged in the past. I decided to put the very vibrant pink from the VR Neons in here, and this is stunning. And even though this looks quite warm toned, I feel that this pulls a lot more neutral on me than, I, than you might expect. Some of those like bronze sort of matte shades actually have enough pink in them that they pull a little bit more cool tone on me. And then I have the, future, uh, the Futurism 3 Astro Pink, uh, and this is really, really pretty, very nice neutrals, and then you just get that pop of teal, and I put the matte black from the Sci-Fi Greens into this one. Really stunning little palette, really nice, easy, blendable formula. I really rate these very highly. The packaging of these is absolutely gorgeous, which is why I cannot get rid of these, but to say I reach for these a lot, the answer would be no. Two more little Huda Beauty palettes then. These are the Nude Rich and the uh, Chocolate Browns, and similar to the purple palettes, these are actual neutrals but they are a little bit rich and saturated for me. They are aimed towards people with darker skin tones than mine, but I sort of bought these to complement some of the other nine pans I have from Huda Beauty, and that's how they work really well. So if I wanna get more out of my lighter neutral palettes, I use this or this, and it works really well every single time. These are some lovely palettes. I really enjoy the quality, but to me, none of these little Huda Beauty 9 pans end up being standalones in my makeup collection. And then again, a brand I think has really stunning formula. It's the Velvet Love from Zoeva, but the color stories in here are just a little bit bland and boring. We have Glorious Golden Eyes, which is the first one here. Really, really pretty. And then we have Beautiful Bright Eyes, which is very similar to something like Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk. I have mentioned many times how I feel that the quality of these is very much on par with things like Dior and Charlotte Tilbury, but at half the price point. That's how good I think these are. However, the color stories are all quite bland and boring, which definitely puts these back a little bit. And then finally, in the number 50, 51 spot is the Dior uh, House of Dreams palette. This is again quite bland, which is why it goes here, but in terms of it being a really good neutral color story, it certainly is. It's just of the Dior palettes I have, I definitely have a favorite, and that's not in this video. So this one is ranked a little bit lower, not because of the formula, I really, really rate the formula, but with these ranking videos, I tend to rank more so based on color story than I do formula or quality, because sometimes I feel that eyeshadow can be really, really good formula, but if the color story just doesn't look like something I might use a lot, then I'm not gonna reach for it as much. So that's why that sort of definitely goes into the rankings for sure. Then we're getting to the section from number 50 to 41, and in the number 50 spot, we have Shroud Cosmetics Arcana. This is a beautiful, more jewel-toned leaning color story. Again, one I could have put with my murky color stories for sure, um, but I didn't have that category originally, and I think a couple of the palettes just slipped through. This definitely has a lot of really nice muted tones to it. It has enough to create a very neutral look with it, but you can more go more curl colorful if you'd like to. Really, really stunning formula. This is still, till this day, one of my favorite shroud palettes for sure. I just don't think that compared to everything else I have in my makeup collection, this formula is still like super new and exciting to me. It is a solid formula for sure, but I definitely think that for the most part, this is a little bit outdated by now. 
We have Aether. I almost decluttered this. This is the Rose Quartz. This is one of their crystal palettes. And I believe Aether Beauty is back, which would be nice if they still do this. Uh, but I bought this when they had a massive sale on last year, right before the brand closed down. Really stunning, soft, neutral, very shimmer heavy shades. Really lovely formula, but this is so similar to other things I already have. And I just prefer the other things a little bit better, which is why those are going to be ranked higher. Similarly is this Moira palette. This was sent to me by a subscriber. This is the Endless Moonlight palette. Really stunning color story here. We get some warmer tones here, but we also get some cool tones, making this a really good neutral color story. I just don't really get any shimmers that I can use that are light enough for me in terms of like creating an inner corner highlight and things like that. So I just felt that a lot of the shimmers in here were too mid-toned and also quality wise, I felt it looked just a little bit cheap. Like I can tell this is not like Natasha Denona shadow for, for instance. So lovely formula. I really appreciate that I got to try this, but not my favorite formula on the planet for sure, but a lovely color story indeed. Then we have the Zoeva Heritage palette. Zoeva is one of my favorite brands. The 10 pens were sadly discontinued years ago. I love this thing to pieces. It has some really good neutrals in. You do get some things that are a little bit more colorful, but they're not too much in your face. So you could very easily work them into a more neutral look. I love this. It really has that great Gatsby kind of vibe to me. And this is not really my favorite, favorite Zuva palette I have in my collection at the minute, but it's still a solid one. The more Huda Beauty then, I have the nude uh, light and the sand haze. Uh, and this is a really, really great combo. I sort of go back and forth between which one of these I love the most. Uh, the sand haze is a bit more mid-tone for me. And then the mood, the nude light goes really, really well with my fair complexion. I really adore both of these, but I do really like pairing them with some of the other palettes I've shown you in this video today to get some more variation out of them because by themselves, while it can be a really pretty look, they're essentially one trick ponies and I really enjoy my palettes if they can do a variety of things. And then we have this guy, the What's Up Beauty Dragon Eye palette. This is a lovely color story and this palette was sent to me by the brand. Um, it does have quite a few mattes, but it also has an, enough shimmers for my liking. And while this looks pretty colorful, but I, I really feel these are the only true colorful shades we get. I know purple is a color, but I feel like some purples can definitely look like a neutral on me. And I definitely think that's the case with this. It has some beautiful duochromes and multi-chromes in as well. And it's one of the very few eyeshadow palettes I have in my collection that has actually good multi-chromes that I feel function in the palette. Very often I just feel they're thrown in, but then I never really enjoy it. So What's a Beauty Dragon Eye is lovely indeed, great quality, nicely curated color story for sure. But again, I have other things that I like a bit better. And then I have the Catrice Neon Nude. This was a repurchase, don't ask me why. But I was buying some products on Cosmetic for Less and I just needed something to get to free shipping. And I spotted this again. I was like, oh, that was such a good palette. But I decluttered mine, why? And this is really lovely. You get warmer tone neutrals here. You get some true, true neutrals here with three pops of neon. Really interesting color story. And it's the good Catrice formula. Catrice can do really good eyeshadow palettes, but it's not always the case, but this was a good one. And I really enjoy the concept of this one, especially. Then we have this little guy. This is the Vizi Viseart Petite Pro 3. Really stunning. This was one of my first Viseart palettes in this little fold up format we get six neutrals and two greens so therefore for me it's definitely more of a neutral palette this is no longer my most reached for viseart palette because i definitely have others that i just like a whole lot better uh, as you will see in this video later today um, the pt pro 3 was the one that made me fall in love with viseart though so i definitely hold it very near and dear to my heart and then we have the Biba from Natasha Denona. This was again sent to me by a subscriber who said, oh yeah, well, I still have one lying about. So if you want to try it, I'll send it over. So that's how I got my hands on this one. Uh, she hadn't even used it. And this is a beautiful palette. It's just, there aren't enough shimmers for my liking. And even though I think it is really, really good quality, I definitely think that Natasha Denona has up, upped her game ever since this was released. And I definitely feel the newer palette she does in the midi format have a better formula than this. So if you, like me, had ever like wished to find out how that works out, I definitely think this is a lovely palette. 
but I definitely think Natasha Denona has outdone herself and does better things now. Then we move on from 40 to 31. So we're pretty much going to the halfway point here. First up is the Colourpop Sprinkle a Little Magic. Some of the shades in here are Sprinkle a Little Magic. A couple of the other ones are from the Off Quartz. I think most of them are from the uh, Sprinkle a Little Magic though. I really love the packaging, but with Colourpop, I just find their color story so, so boring and I'm always rearranging their palette, so that's why this isn't ranked super high, because even though I love the shades in here, it's essentially now a neutral palette with a pop of green, which I love. I love that look for myself, but this is not something you can buy, so therefore I didn't want to rank it super high. Then I have the other What's Up Beauty palette from my collection, the Geodes. This was also sent to me in PR, and here we have some really lovely neutrals, and then these like really soft pops of color. So to me, this, this, and this is like the only thing here that's truly, truly colorful. Really lovely. I really adore the way this looks on my skin tone. Some really nice sparkly shimmers. This is a lovely palette. Again, really nicely curated. All the shades go together really well. But like, like I said many times, I just have other things in my collection that I prefer. Glaminatrix then, the Sugar and Spice. This was one I did not have on my radar for the longest time, but essentially what this is is a neutral palette with pops of pastel and multi-chromes. And this is another one of those palettes where I'm like, she isn't in entirely colorful. You can do colorful looks with it, but you can also keep it very neutral if you so wish to. And this is another one where I'm like, yeah, the multi-chromes actually make sense for once. So that's why I do enjoy this palette a lot. Laminatrix has a really good formula, I'm not gonna lie. And this is definitely a little bit more interesting, but I have only tried it recently. So I cannot really name it like a favorite because I haven't gone back to this. This hasn't like, me like nestled itself into my brain yet, you could say. So that's why it's ranked a little bit lower. One that has been around for some time is the Venus XL2. I actually realized as I was like putting everything together that quite a few of these like neutral pellets with pops of sagey green are in this section of this video. Uh, I just feel that I can't really choose between them, you could say. So here's the Lime Crime. I definitely think of all the palettes we got with this kind of color story, that this is the one that gives you the biggest variety of shade. It even has some warm tones in there. It's really lovely. It has some toppers. This palette was very much ahead of its time, and I think it's very much looked over by a lot of people. It's still one of my favorites in my collection for sure, but I have definitely other things in my collection that I feel have better quality by now. Persona Identity 2 is a really lovely palette. I think this is stunning, but the reason why I keep it around is like these two shades, the green and the purple. That's what I reach for. I never really loved how these four shades were just incredibly similar in this palette, but I really enjoyed the Persona Cosmetics formula. It is really high quality, and I can definitely see more use for this palette in my collection, but I almost decluttered it last year, so I definitely almost got rid of it, which is why I know it's not my super duper favorite one, so I knew it had to, it had to go somewhere in the bottom half of the ranking. Remember what I said about palettes with these like soft green shades in? Another one I have is the Petals on Point from Colourpop. This is one I haven't reorganized and I don't think I will be very likely to do that anytime soon. Love these softer pinks, love these neutrals here. The green are the main letdown here. They don't really show up on my skin, which is such a, such a shame. But this is a really beautiful, soft color story indeed. However, I have other things by Colourpop that may not be in this, in this ranking per se, but that I just like a little bit better than I do this one. So while this is good enough, it's sort of like middle of the road, which is where it ended up in the ranking. Now, this may be a bit of a shocker to some people, but the Dollhouse from Blend Bunny, which is not my favorite from the get-go, um, once I got it in, I should say, because of course I did buy it. The main reason why I was interested in it is because it has an extra row of shimmers, which Blend Bunny usually doesn't do. But once I started using it, I very quickly found out that the dark row is too dark for me. So this is as dark as I can go. And then these are my mid-tones, but then I'm sort of like losing a row, you could say. So also this was very much promoted by a lot of people as being cool toned. And then I got it home and I was like, this isn't really cool toned. So the dollhouse from Blend Bunny just wasn't quite right for me in terms of the color story, 
but I think Blend Bunny has a beautiful formula indeed. And we have the Blueberry Muffin from BH Cosmetics. This is one where I really sort of like, I, this could have gone into three different piles. This could have gone in the, into the murky colorful palettes. It could have gone into the colorful palettes. It could be a neutral palette. I decided to put it in here because as colorful as it looks, there's only five blues and everything else is a neutral. So then I'm like, then it needs to go into the neutral palette ranking. And I do really enjoy this formula from BH, but because not all of the shades in this palette look good on my complexion, I always tend to go for the same look whenever I use this palette. So to me, it's a bit of a one trick pony. So that's why I'm not ranking it any higher than this. Another one trick pony then, this is by Clio. This is the Walking on the Cozy Alley. This is the more neutral toned one I have from the brand. Really, really stunning. I actually like this better than the uh, Picnic by the Sunset. This is really lovely, but it's very matte heavy, which is not my preference. There's only one shimmer, which is good, but overall this is just very muted and very samey samey. So I'm not getting the versatility out of the palette that I would want to have. Then we have the ABH Nouveau, again a palette with these like dusty greens in. I had to repress mine yet again because I cracked this when I was filming another video and it's just been a bit messy ever since. So if this looks messy, I do apologize. This is beautiful. I think it's a beautiful neutral color story. And it was the first one we got, of course, in this newer series that ABH has been doing. And I didn't pick up any of the other ones because I felt they looked too similar to this. And I just really like a neutral palette with a pop of green. I definitely think this video is confirming that it once again for me, that that's just one of my favorite things to reach for. And then finally in this part of the ranking, I have definitely ranked some of these MUA five bands much higher than I do this one, but I feel this is the most boring one out of the bunch that I have. This is the Neutral Wanderer, and this is really, really pretty. If you're looking for a really good, affordable, neutral eyeshadow palette that is under five pounds at the UK drugstore, then maybe look into this. Next up, we're going from numbers 30 to 21. And then we have number 30, which is this Kaleidos palette. This is the Cold Smoke. Uh, or cold brew, cold brew palette. Uh, and this is really lovely. It can be a little bit cooler toned, but if you have a w very warm undertone, that will probably show up. If you have a very cool undertone, this is probably gonna pull more warm tone on you, which is why I'm ranking it with the neutral palettes because it's sort of more like smack in the middle, you could say. And I love these little quads from Kaleidos. I have ranked some of them as part of my top 10 for sure. So I love this formula. It's just, again, compared to all of my other neutral tone palettes, this is definitely good. So it goes in the top half of the ranking, but it doesn't deserve like a spot in the top 10. Another brand I really adore, but this is just not my favorite because I feel this brand just really shines in the more colorful department and it's Fantasy Cosmetica. This is the Fighter palette. And when I tried this, I was like, oh, this is so, so beautiful. It's got cool tones, it's got warm tones, making it a neutral palette in my brain for sure. And the warm tones in this, I felt were in super duper warm tone. They weren't so warm and spicy that I needed to put it with my warm tone ranking. And I adore the Fantasy Cosmetica formula. So I knew it had to make it into the top half of this ranking. Another palette that's sort of like borderline colorful, but that I did want to show here is the Heaven on Earth Light from Sydney Grace. This is a beautiful palette. I really adore the Sydney Grace formula. Most of my singles are by them. And this is the neutral row. Then we get some greens, but they pull very neutral on me. Like, again, I could have put this with my colorful palettes, but this is one that slipped through. And then we get those blues, but the blues are not my favorite shades in this palette. It's really this top half where it's at for me. And that's what I would go back for, back to all the time with this one. So that's why I decided to, why I decided to keep it in here. Uh, it's a very solid formula. I think I really, really enjoy it. I'm not gonna pull this palette apart. These are all magnetic by Sydney Gray, so that's great. This is such a lovely formula and the color story is just really enjoyable to look at as well. Maybe not as neutral as the rest, so that's why I'm not ranking it any higher. I don't need the golden palette because I have this, the gold from Natasha Denona, an original favorite in my collection. And I think this used to be in my top 10. I have just found other things I like better. I'm keeping it around for these four shades because those are truly special and I really enjoy Kava. I did take out the yellow tone gold that was in the middle and I stuck a shade in from the Lila and that is now my gold palette and I'm really happy with the way this looks. It's just, again, an older one in my collection, one that I really still hold very near and dear to my heart, 
but I definitely have tried newer things that I'm much more excited for. Then we have the Sigma Enchanted. This is lovely too. I always say how I love using these eight shades and I sort of ignore those, but this is very much a neutral color story with some like grungy pops of color. That's the way I feel about this one. It can be very neutral. It can be very much glammed up depending on which shades you combine. This is lovely, but the Sigma formula isn't exactly my favorite. I will be testing out the cool neutrals for you. Don't worry. Uh, that review is going to come up in the next couple of months for sure, but I haven't been able to try that palette yet. Then we have the Charmeuse by Viseart. This is a lovely one as well. Again, Viseart is a brand I truly, truly adore. This is a beautiful color story, but incredibly mid-toned. So on my complexion, all of these shades just blend together and you can't really get a distinct look out of it. So even though I do really enjoy the Viseart formula, this color story just wasn't quite perfect for me, which is why I'm ranking it a little bit lower. But because I love the formula so much, it does get ranked a little bit higher than some of the other Viseart things I've shown you in this video. Then we have this guy, the Autumn Closet from Etude. This is one that I think, again, I had in a top 10 at some point. This is a lovely K-Beauty uh, product for sure. But again, I tend to use this for like one or two different looks. However, the color story is really nicely neutral. I know they still do it, but in a slightly rend uh, different rendition. It now is a nine pen and it's square packaging rather than this rectangle that I have. So I know this exact palette you can no longer get, which is a bit of a shame. Then another palette that is now lost to us is the BH Cosmetics Love in London. I adore this thing to pieces. I went back to it in July. And I still really, till this day, enjoy this palette so, so very much. I really enjoy this shade here and then also that taupe. I love the two pops of blue we get in here. Overall, now that I've used it again, I'm like, hmm, this is actually quite mid-tone heavy. So maybe not as perfect anymore as I thought when I first got this, but it is a very beautiful palette indeed. And then next up we have the Natasha Denona Glam palette. I will pop a picture up of the original color story because mine has been rearranged. I tend to do that with a lot of my palettes if I don't like the color story. This is now a really beautiful neutral color story with some pops of like rosy tones, you could say, but I really adore this. It looks stunning. I put the multi-chrome of the My Dream in here and it works beautifully with these shades. Um, but the original Glam was really, really good. It had a lot of cool tones in, which is what I enjoyed about the palette, but I've used a lot of those cool tones to actually put in one of the other palettes by Natasha Denona that, that's still coming up in this video later on. So the Glam palette, as much as I like those colors individually, I didn't love the palette as a whole, which is why I ended up pulling apart four of my Natasha Denona palettes and rearranging them, which this is the first one of three that you'll see in this video. No, two, there's two of them here, I think. I think the other ones were already in the other videos. Then we have the Zoeva Blanc Fusion, and this is rounding up our 30 to 21 sort of roundup. The Blanc Fusion is essentially a neutral palette with pops of yellow. This could make it warm toned for some people, but on me, this is a really, really good neutral color story. It has some duochromes in, really nice shifty shades, really intense metallics. This is the really, really good formula from Zoeva that I have just enjoyed so, so much. And I rate this one really highly in my collection indeed. So next up, we're going from number 20 to 11. So this is my top 20. Number 20 is the Pat McGrath Moonlit Seduction. Which num mothership is this? This is the Mothership 10. And I have decluttered a lot of my motherships because I didn't feel they were quite right. But the Moonlit Seduction was the one I kept over the Divine Rose because that one was a bit warm tone. This one is a true, true neutral on me. It has a really nice blend of warmer tones and cooler tones. And this is a really stunning palette. I really enjoy the Pat McGrath formula. I think it is a really good one. But because the color story is always like, there's always something that I would like to change about these palettes. So especially in this one, it's not as perfect as some of the things that are coming up in the top 10. Another palette that I love and adore is this guy, the Nomad Hunted Europe. This palette is gonna come back, that's what I've heard. So Nomad Cosmetics is going to bring back both of their Halloween releases from recent years, 
and the Haunted Europe is going to be back with a limited stock for Halloween time. And this is so, so beautiful. Mm, so, so stunning. Sure, you get the pumpkin shade, so there is warmth in here, but to me, these like cooler tones and the true, true neutrals with the pops of green, it just means that you can do anything. This is colorful, it's neutral, it's got rosy tones, it's got warm tones, and that to me, like if you add it all up together, this is going to be a really nice neutral tone. If you like your fall color stories, you, ha you don't have this, maybe you want to pick it up. A really stunning palette by Be Perfect. This is the Gravity palette. This is one that I hadn't originally really had any interest in, but then some palettes came out by higher end brands. And to me, in my brain, I was like, hmm, this kind of looks like something that could be similar to the makeup by Mario with the real eyes and the Natasha Denona Idina nude. And it is. So if you like the look of those two palettes, but you don't have the funds to spend on those really expensive palettes, and you just so happen to enjoy deeper, darker, more glammed up looks, try this, because this is really good. There aren't enough shimmers for my liking. That's the only thing. And it does get super dark here with those four shades. That's the only downside for someone with my fair skin. But if you have a deeper skin tone, or if you just like really saturated, dark, deep looks, this is really lovely. So be perfect for how affordable it is. Sure, I can tell that this isn't Natasha Denona quality eyeshadow, but this is a is one that really surprised me. Next up, we have this guy. This is by M Cosmetics. This is the Divine Skies eyeshadow palette in Roda. And this is a perfect neutral tone palette. It's got warmth, but there is definitely like this really nice sort of smack in the middle neutral vibe to this. It's only six shades, but it's a wonderful formula. I like this enough that I actually picked up one of the other ones um, because I do really enjoy what this palette has to offer. It's really nice, small, curated, and I tend to like that with a lot of my palettes. Next up, a very affordable option as well that I think is a really, really good neutral color story. It's the Deja Brew by ColourPop, and this is one that I hadn't clocked myself originally. However, I saw someone on TikTok using this, and then I was like, why did I miss out on this? And this is such a lovely one. I actually ended up liking this a little bit better than my That's Taupe, which has been a favorite for years. But this is just a little bit more neutral leaning. It's not as warm toned. It's not as dark either. Uh, it does have fewer shimmers, which is a bit of a shame. But this is such a lovely, good quality ColourPop palette that is affordable, especially if you're in the US, that I really enjoy. We have to have some original favorites in here, of course. The Tartlet in Bloom, still in the top 15. Still, till this day. This is such a good one. Mine is super old, so it doesn't have the magnetic pans, but I've been told that the newer Tarte ones do have magnetic pans and you could take them out. I don't have that opportunity, but I have always mentioned how I feel this palette is such a good one for people who are just starting out. If you are looking at a palette and you don't know what to do with it, Try this one, because it spells it out for you. Each row is a look, you get warm tones, you get neutrals, you get cool tones. What else do you want? And a palette that I feel very similarly about, it's just not as nicely arranged as the Tarte, which is the Persona Identity 2. In my brain, these two go hand in hand. They even have similar packaging. Let's be real here. Um, but this is really, really lovely. This palette was designed with brown eyes in mind. So if you're someone with brown eyes, this may be something you want to look into. Another really, really good favorite of mine are these little Glossier Monochromes palettes. This is the one in Jute. This is the mo more neutral one of the two that I have. This is very light. It is just a wash of color in a matte, a shimmer, and a metallic. This is super duper pretty, really nice, easy to use eyeshadow that just, it's just foolproof every time and I love it for that. Now this one hurts a little bit, but just outside of the top 10 is this Falling Colors palette by Catrice. This is sadly no longer around. It was limited edition. They brought it back last year, which, which I just loved so much. It's got rosy tones. It does have these like neutrally things here. You get some warmth, but the way this comes together, I've mentioned it so many times, but this performs like a Huda Beauty palette, but at a fraction of the cost. And I love Catrice to pieces for doing something this good. And finally, to round up the top 20, we have number 11. This is Natasha Denona Retro Glam, the original, the small guy. 
and this is just lovely. I think this is really, really lovely. Um, we have two of those greens and then we have those peachy pinks for just the five pan. I can do several different looks with this, which I think is amazing. However, I do think there are other things that I like a little bit better than this. And we're kicking off the top 10 with this guy, the other Nomad Halloween palette. This is the Ghost Town USA. And if you are subscribed to the channel and you enter the giveaway, I will leave the link in the description box down below. You can win this because this is currently in my giveaway for eyeshadow palette month. And this is so, so lovely. I know a lot of people will look at this and think this is not a neutral color story, but because of these shades, I definitely feel that, you know, you don't have to stick to these shades. You can mix and match things and you will get a really lovely neutral color story every time. Could I have put this with my murky color story as well? Just like the, Haunty, uh, the Haunted Europe. I probably could have, but I just, in my brain, this is just a neutral palette with pops of color. That's the way it works in my brain. Those are the looks I tend to go for when I reach for this palette. It's incredibly versatile and the Nomad formula is great for beginners, beginners especially, because indie brands usually have these like really intense uh, wham, bam, kazam sort of pigmentation to it, which for beginners can be very intimidating. And Nomads is a little bit more blendable. It's a little bit more buildable, so a lot easier to use in my opinion. Remember that I said there would be more Sydney Grace coming up? I also have the Love's Journey. This was gifted to me by a friend, which I was super happy with. And uh, this was one I didn't pick out myself, but it ended up being my favorite. <laughs> So that's why this is in the top 10. I have the cool tones here, the neutrals, the warm tones, such a nice yummy mix. And it is the amazing Sydney Grace formula that I just love. Number eight is the big Natasha Denona Retro Glam. I loved the original color story to this already, but I have rearranged mine. Again, picture here to show you what the original color story looks like. But this is what mine now looks like. I know it looks very cool tone, but I'm ranking the original color story. I'm not ranking this here, um, but I used a lot of the shades from the glam and then the greens from the retro glam are in here for sure. Plus a couple of the cool tones that were in that palette. I, I essentially took out the pinks. That's, that's the way this palette now works. So the pinks are somewhere else, but um, those were a bit warm tone and took away from the palette in my opinion, but I love the Natasha Denona formula. I think it's lovely. And I definitely love that we finally got the one palette that everybody had been asking Natasha Denona about ever since creating the Retro Glam Mini. Um, so I definitely think that this is a lovely palette. Even if you buy the original color story, I think you're gonna love it. Sadly, one that's been discontinued, but one that I truly adore is by Glam Shop. And you will have seen that a lot of my Glam Shop palettes end up in these top tens of the rankings because they're just one of my favorite formulas and I just really, really enjoy it. This is such a nice light yet neutral color story that has a good mix of like warmer tones and cooler tones, really, really stunning shimmers in here. This palette just really, truly comes together for me and it really wasn't that expensive either. Another one that's sadly discontinued, I hate to do this to you guys, but sometimes my favorites just have to happen to be old, old favorites from my collection. And in recent months, I have really been falling back in love with my Zoeva Melody. Uh, someone requested I put it in a video of mine and I started using it again. I was like, oh, this is so, so good. And this is one when I first purchased it, I wasn't really eyeing this up as a potential favorite. This one grew on me over time. And now that I really love these like softer neutrals with perhaps a pop of something on the lower lash line, I love it. And this guy in the middle is a, is a duochrome, which I've said this so many times, Zoeva already did duochromes in their palettes before duochromes were a thing and nobody was talking about it, which they never got credit for how good they were back when they were doing those palettes. Another discontinued palette because the brand no longer exists. This is by Misha Lu. This is the Fawn. And this is, this is such a stunning color story. This is so, so beautiful. It's very Nabla side-by-side-esque. So if the Nabla side-by-side -side is still available, you could get this color story quite easily from another brand. You definitely don't need this one in particular. 
Um, but I love this because it just, it has everything I want. It has the cool tones. You get those peachy tones, but they're not too, too warm. They're just really good for blending out some of these reddish tones that it has. It's not like orange. So to me, therefore, it's still a really good neutral tone palette. Really, really stunning. Love the formula of this. I don't know where this brand went. It just, and one day it was suddenly, it was just gone. And I still really enjoy the two palettes I have by them. Number four, Makeup by Mario, Ethereal Eyes. Um, the top four, I really couldn't decide what to put where, um, but this is so, so beautiful. The minute I tried it, I was like, oh, this is eyeshadow like I've never tried before. This is something new in this, in this formula, the way it blends, the way it picks up with brushes, the way these shimmers apply. It's just so, so sophisticated and lovely. I ended up using this palette on my neighbor when I did her makeup for her wedding day. Uh, we used these two shades here in the middle with some other shades thrown in the mix. We really sort of like took a lot of different things from my eyeshadow palette collection and made a, made a custom look, you could say. But yeah, the makeup by Mario is excellent quality, really, really nice. And if you just need a one-stop shop, then something like this, I think, can see a lot of people through. But one of my original favorites, I'm pretty sure the last time I ranked this, this was number one. It has dropped a couple of places and it's the Viseyard Cashmere. But this is still so, so good. I still really enjoy this palette. It has everything I want. It has rosy tones, it has cool tones, it has warm tones, it has neutrals. And everything goes together. That's the important part here. All of these shades can be mixed and matched. You can go with quads, you can do like six shades here. I've done, I've used this in so many different renditions and I just still enjoy this so, so very much. The Viseart quality is one of my favorites and this color story, I just, even Viseart hasn't been able to top this. So this is just such a good one. One of my all time favorites for sure but a palette that really, really inched its way into the top 10 straight away after trying it was the Gloss Gods New Neutral. Now I dropped mine, so I had to repress the darkest shade and the packaging is light and I can't get it clean um, because it's stuck to the magnet. So that's why this looks very messy. So I do apologize for what mine looks like. I love this so, so very much. The bottom row is a little bit more like green cool tote leaning almost. The middle row has some like spicier things and then this is the more neutral row. There are some multi-chromes in here, some duo chromes, duo chromes. There is like a flaky shade. It has so much going for it. This is when like when indie brands start to commit to like doing good neutral palettes, they can do some really interesting things and I think this palette just shows it and it's one of my favorites. And finally, my number one neutral palette. Who saw this one coming? It was the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude, for sure. Um, I feel like you don't need both the Makeup by Mario and this. I feel both of them are too similar to have both if you were choosing between either one of them. I would go for this one because I feel this just has a little bit more variation in terms of the different textures we're getting than the Makeup by Mario. In the Makeup by Mario, a lot of the uh, shimmers are a little bit more on the sparkly side and better as toppers. Whereas in the Natasha Denona, we get actual metallics that you can use by itself. That I feel is like the main difference. This is of course uh, 15 pans, the makeup by Mario is 12. So there is a little bit more here. The peachy tones we get here aren't peachy on me, they pull pink. So for me, this is just a really good smack in the middle neutral palette. And I just, like I have rearranged a lot of my Natasha Denona palettes. This is one I haven't felt the need to rearrange, which says something because Natasha Denona color stories aren't always my favorite, but I love the formula. There you have it. Those were all of my neutral eyeshadow palettes that I wanted to rank for you today. Thank you so very much for joining me and I hope you would like to stay tuned for more. Thumbs up the video. In the meantime, I'm currently doing daily videos for eyeshadow palette month. So stick around for more, subscribe, and then I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.